Welcome to Storytime with Sugar. Today we're reading, Hey There, It's Yogi Bear. Cindy was lost, dear and lovely Cindy, and Yogi Bear and Boo Boo were looking for her. There's her picture on that circus poster, Boo Boo, said Yogi to his friend. So Cindy must be in the circus, don't you agree? Oh yes, Yogi, said Boo Boo, I agree. Well then, said Yogi in his deepest voice, let's go in and find her. And they slipped in past the ticket taker. Across the circus grounds they went, past trailers, trunks, and bales of hay. All at once, Boo Boo tugged at Yogi. How will you get into the big tent without a ticket stub, asked Boo Boo. Frowning, Yogi stopped and looked around. He saw a clothesline strung beside a trailer. He saw a clown suit hanging from the clothesline. Yogi chuckled. He took the clown suit from the line and lickety-split, he got dressed in it. Dressed up as a clown, said Yogi, I could mingle with the other clowns. Poor Yogi mingled with the other clowns much sooner than he expected. Along came a clown car, humping and bumping crazily. Yogi couldn't move fast enough to get out of the little car's way. Bam, up he went, heels over head in the air. Bump, down came Yogi, landing on the front seat, right on top of a clown. The other clowns could hardly believe their eyes. Quaking under Yogi's weight, the car sped into the big tent. It humped and bumped around the ring while the crowd roared. Suddenly, the clown driver pressed a button and the back of the car dropped off. He pressed button after button. Wheels fell off, smoke blew, sparks flew, the clowns went tumbling one by one, and heels over head went Yogi, up in the air once more. Yogi landed on a trampoline, and up he popped to the top of the tent. It must be a new act, the people said to one another. Up and down, up and down, Yogi bounced and bounced on the trampoline. At last, shooting up like an arrow, he burst right out of the tent, and the next thing he knew, he was dangling upside down, almost nose to nose with Cindy. Yogi, she cried. Hello there, he said in a very befuddled voice. Then he asked how she came to join the circus. I didn't join, Cindy explained. I was lost and they captured me. They keep me locked in this cage. Well then, said Yogi, don't go away. I'll get the key and set you free. Who had the key? Grifter Chiseling had the key. Grifter and his brother Snively on the circus. They were in their tent counting all their money when in walked Yogi. Their big ugly dog growled and bared his teeth, but the circus owners pretended to be friendly. Down, mugger, down, said Snively. Grifter asked Yogi, what can we do for you? I'm here to take Cindy home, Yogi said. Please give me her key. The Chiseling brothers gave crafty smiles. As they smiled, they thought, Cindy makes lots of money for us. If we had two bears, we would have twice as much money. Yogi said, Grifter, you don't need the key. You're our guest, said Snively. We'll do the work. And they hustled Yogi right back to the cage. Grifter opened the cage door with a big brass key. Yogi beamed. That was very, very nice of you, he told the circus owners. Their smiles grew craftier. Yogi, said Grifter, step inside. Don't be shy, said Snively. Go in and give Cindy a bear hug. Why not, chuckled Yogi, stepping in. Clang! The cage door slammed shut behind him. Yogi, sneered the chiseling brothers, you just joined our circus. Poor Yogi shook the bars and roared his loudest, but he couldn't break out of the cage. Grifter gave the key to Snively. Guard it with your life, he said. I will, said Snively, putting the key under his hat. You, Mugger, Grifter told the dog, stay here and guard the cage. Mugger planted himself by the cage door. He stood there facing the bars and snarled. Behind the bars, Yogi gave a deep sigh. Cindy sobbed beside him. Off went the greedy brothers. They did not see Boo Boo watching them from behind a bale of hay, but Yogi did, and Yogi wondered, what could little Boo Boo do? This is what he did. Late that night, Boo Boo crept into the circus owner's tent. He could hear Grifter and Snively snoring in the dark, but when he crept closer, he saw that Snively still had his hat on, and the big brass key was still under his hat. Lucky for me, thought Boo-Boo, that I hid behind a bale of hay. Some wisp of hay still clung to Boo-Boo's fur. 
He took one of the wisp and held it under Snively's nose. He tickled the nose once. He tickled the nose twice. Snively sneezed. Achoo! As Snively sneezed, his hat went flying. Boo Boo snatched the key. Then he tiptoed out. After a few mumbles and grumbles, Grifter and Snively Chiseling could be heard snoring in the dark again. Now Boo Boo tiptoed toward the cage. Mugger the dog seemed sound asleep, but Boo Boo wasn't taking any chances. He was very, very quiet. Suddenly, Cindy opened her eyes. Peering through the bars, she saw a small round furry shape coming closer and closer. Boo Boo, she cried. With a fierce snarl, Mugger sprang to his feet. Sure is good that I'm so small and nimble, thought Boo-Boo. As Mugger circled to see who was beside, behind him, Boo-Boo circled even faster. Around and around the snarling dog went, faster and faster and faster, but he never got a glimpse of Boo-Boo. He got quite, quite dizzy instead. Down fell Mugger flat on his back. He gave some weak groans, then closed his eyes and started snoring. Sleep well, said Bugger. Boo-boo as Mugger went on snoring, and he opened the cage door with a big brass key. Out leaped Cindy. Yogi sprang out after her. Our hero, they whispered, hugging Boo-boo. Off they went down the road, away from the circus. They ran and ran for many hours by the light of the moon. Sure feels good to be going home, Yogi panted. Don't you agree, my friends? Cindy and Boo-Boo were so out of breath they could not say a word, but they agreed. Oh, how they agreed.